thank you so much efrm for uh, uh, and and in for my own brand okay for giving me this opportunity uh, uh, first of all good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, we all know pandemic has shown us the new way of working also it has transformed and carved the new age thinking for small medium large enterprises in the space of customer communication and the new way we do the business okay it has changed the definition for an ideal customer approach and customer centricity this is not about understanding the customer behavior but actually venturing into new possibilities of reaching out uh, end users and mobilizing the enterprise workforces with trust and technology based is the thought process we would be discussing today about harnessing the power of digitalization in the financial sector to double click this burning topic how digitize uh, digitalization and the customer communication has given wings to the fsi sector in the country we have mr ashish gupta who's the cto of max pupa health insurance with us welcome ashish and it's a pleasure to have you with us today ashish hi, hi everyone hey milan thank you so much for having yeah. me here indeed a yeah. pleasure ashish most of the financial institutions have been on various stages of their digital transformation journey you know which is the uh, i mean which in most cases was limited to customer facing digital layer it was actually limited the new challenges upon financial institutions has accentuated the need for more and a holistic approach moving beyond the customer interface and digitization includes the middle and the back office operations and support functions where processes are transformed and automated into an intelligent workflow okay well in and around we have few questions for you ashish and uh, i would like you to throw some light and help us understand this scenario better from your industry point of view so ashish should uh, are you are you ready to take those questions should i all should set, I and, all set yeah. fire away okay so the ashish the pandemic has disrupted people's lives business uh economies uh, financial institutions are no different than that right how do you observe the financial sector reeling under this covid 19 crisis so look uh, covid has had a multiple impact uh, across different industries and it's obviously touched different industries differently uh, i represent insurance uh, that is the part of the financial sector that's actually gained uh, traction during this covid times both from a, a, a top of the mind recall in terms of customers making them realize how fragile uh, the world today is and how much they need to protect themselves so that mindsets come in but actually in very tangible numbers i think all of us have seen uh, triple digit growth rates for most of this year on at least new business uh, so in that sense in that sense i think i represent an industry uh, that is fortunate in this unfortunate times uh but but yeah it's not been too bad for us uh, i think i think more of it has been on the side of ensuring that that growth is sustainable ensuring that the back offices as you mentioned perform to task uh, but for us it's not really been a crisis it, in fact in in many sense it's been a it, it, we hope it's going to be a tipping point for insurance penetration in this country right in fact certain policies uh, where government are also encouraging a lot of people uh, to to bend towards picking up the life insurance policies and and if you say so rashi shamin it's it's very good for the business that is booming the current era there we come to the second question ashish when it comes to insurance buying behavior like we were just talking about the consumer behavior the challenges in the pre covid era were more towards insufficient penetration uh, uh, deficient rural consumer base okay etc i mean there were a lot of them but key reasons could be lack of awareness or intention to buy the an intention to buy was one of the biggest concern right how this has changed and how did the insurance sector deal with such fight fi uh, fire fighting scenario okay during this covid period now this is during the covid period where awareness drive to be accelerated to reach the maximum and and uh, go about the limitations increase the accessibility as well as manage with your resources what do you think ashish so yeah that's true insurance is a push product uh, at the end of the day uh, it is pull in a certain number of cases where suddenly you go to a hospital or some relative of yours has fallen ill uh, and there's been a massive uh, need for need for cash and then you suddenly realize that hey i should protect myself from that in fact i think statistically medical loans is the third largest loan category in this country uh, which is which is quite a sad state of affairs so it has been that uh, now specifically talking about covid i think covid just raised awareness 
uh, whether it was government initiatives like uh, Corona Kavach and other COVID uh, programs uh, that they pushed insurers to run, or whether it was a general understanding that, look, a simple thing like a flu, uh, which was always believed to be a flu until it became COVID, it was just a flu, uh, yeah. can actually have a bill upwards of 5 to 15 lakhs, uh, right? So I think, I think that awareness came naturally. Uh, the challenge for us was that this has always been a half digital, what, what is uglyly known as digital, half physical, half digital uh, industry. Uh, for that, uh, to adopt complete digital mechanisms where the entire payment is digital, the entire form filling is di digital, the entire interaction with the customers in terms of their medical declarations is digital, the entire issuance is digital. Uh, so to enable that uh, has been a, a significant, exciting uh, journey for us. Uh, it's not that all of this did not exist, uh, but it was just on steroids for the last six months. And if you look at some of the initiatives beyond the basics uh, of, of issuance and form filling that we've done, we've launched stuff like EMIs, uh, exactly to your point, to make our rural audience uh, that much, the, the product that much more tangible to them. Uh, to this to the tier two cities to the tier three cities and and we're seeing fantastic adoption i mean historically i've launched emis multiple times in my career and and typically the trajectory we've had in two months is something that we typically see in in maybe two years uh, right uh, it's already at a massive adoption rate and similarly if you look at uh, what we've been able to uh, launch uh, and get adopted uh, uh, has been phenomenal so our entire claims process used to be a physical process you always had to courier slash drop your claim documents to a nearest center uh, to get a reimbursement claim right all of that was made digital and today in in, in less than about 45 days of launch uh, it's it has more than 90 percent adoption so from zero to 90 in 45 days is something that obviously i have never seen throughout my career so I think I think very very exciting times from that perspective. Uh, lots of initiatives. I mean, keep keeps us at our, keeps all of us on our toes uh, because you know uh, it's all new world to us. It's 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 a lot of new exciting initiatives. Uh, but the good part is most of these initiatives are pull initiatives, not push initiatives. So the EMI is a pull initiative. Uh, the whole claims piece is a pull initiative. Making all our employees work from home in a manner that does not compromise security again a massive pull initiative uh, because tomorrow it opens up the doors for us to open up virtually anybody uh, to come in as a part-time resource as a full-time resource work from their house work from their hometowns so i think i think i think it's a world of opportunities i think all of us have been in a mad rush uh, both from a land grabbing business perspective as well as business enabling perspective uh, so yeah, lots of exciting things happening and lots of exciting things to look forward to. Absolutely, and and one of the enabler is uh, is the uh, is the self digitization and the interest of people buying new handsets devices. That's also refueling the growth for all the sectors because people are now more hooked up and and they try and understand and the kind of information they want they actually get it. Uh, I mean, in the phone uh, with a one click, so that becomes easy for people to even sell through these policies and uh, approach That's actually made a very yes. good point honestly because i mean for all the flack that these guys receive our colleagues in the telecom world have done a magnificent job during the covid period i mean i have not seen anybody complain that hey my internet is not working so i can't work uh, they've been able to sustain a dramatic increase uh, in their in the many fold increase in their demand uh, without much downtime at all. So I think I think hats off to them uh, and a big thanks to that industry to helping for helping us power through this time. Yeah, actually, I mean, uh, uh, they are the catalyst, they are the source for taking that information from point A to point B for uh, us uh, to be able to act upon and, and fueling uh, both our businesses on the digital side. And I belong to that, so I totally understand that piece. Uh, well, that takes us to the next question, Ashish. The digital revolution that has transformed the way consumers buy music. I mean, we just spoke about it. Hail taxis and communicate uh, uh, with each other is, is, is phenomenal. Okay, And now the trend is equally catching up to the insurance industry. What scope has insurance industry scored for itself during this space? And what opportunities do you foresee for this segment going forward? So I think uh, insurance is, is a far more complicated product. It's uh, both complicated on two fronts. One, it's a high ticket size item. 
uh, b it has a lot of uh, sections subsections and clauses and terms and conditions so what happens is insurance by default is a more complex project so i must be honest insurance hasn't seen the dramatic self serve self buy that let's say a music industry has uh, <clears throat> as so far uh, but what's happened is that at least the first steps are taken now people are comfortable talking to people digitally uh, you don't necessarily have a person saying that hey you know come visit my home and when you visit my home at that time i will you know think about what you're saying uh, so now people are comfortable conversing with uh, experts uh, whether agents advisors uh, or their or their friends and fraternity uh, discuss digitally and then buy digitally at least that's happened uh, which was for a long time not happening it was all physical face to face contacts uh, only a few players in this entire industry had been able to do a, a significant job at digital uh but but that's happened uh, so that's good so that's step 1 now as uh, insurers uh, make their products easier to understand more transparent uh, i think the next stage uh, hopefully will come in a year or two uh, but the good part is everybody's buying digitally so the next steps can be taken otherwise it was a non starter how correct, many of us look uh, many of us have bought insurance policies how many of us have actually read the terms and conditions no most of us go by what the person told us right so so that's that's where i think insurance companies will also take a uh, they've already done a lot of good work here but i think they'll continue to strive to bring in more and more transparency uh, such that a, a consumer can understand a policy in maybe 30 seconds to 2 minutes uh, and when that happens i think you'll see more and more adoption of self buy self serve and all of that absolutely and uh, i mean i myself knew were different okay during pandemic i bought my first uh, uh, policy with uh, i mean the life not first but obviously one of the life insurance policies and i understand how the entire uh, effect of pandemic uh, has given one to think differently when it comes to insurance segment well in year 2020 ashish that has been a defining moment for the digital transformation for us because it it took us to the need of digital transformation as a financial institution that invested strategically financially and culturally in digital okay we would like to share uh, would you like to sh share the max bupa how they have shifted the gear okay and built true omni channel capability with seamless connectivity across channels yeah so i must say one thing by the way belend uh, i think financial industry had taken great leaps in digitization uh even before the pandemic so i don't think the pandemic has dramatically altered the way we were building stuff or the way we were thinking and i mean uh, i've talked about insurance let me even talk about banks when was the last time you visited a bank uh, right at least i haven't visited a bank in over 2 to 3 years uh, yeah. right yeah so so i think i think a lot of and, and if you look at loans uh, for example as another financial industry today you get loans within minutes sitting from the comfort of your home so uh, and the same was true for insurance you would always buy insurance digitally so i don't think the pandemic has dramatically altered uh, the strategic direction we had it's just made it that much more easy to get adoption and hence we are even more excited in bringing up the pace at which we were we were trying to drive this so if earlier uh, digitization and digitalization was one of the strategic objectives i think now there is no other objective but digitalization and digitization right so new channels for sales better customer service and digitize everything and then of course within digitalization now what's happening is since you have everything digitized why not just go ahead and automate everything so i'll give you another example uh, we used to run these manual queues for issuance as a check double check whatever the thought process was this year we've gotten rid of all of them so if you have if you buy a policy and a medical is not required the policy goes end to end without any human being ever touching it and the tax have reduced by by a ratio of let me put this by a ratio of 150 is to 1 so if it used to take 150 units of time for a straight through uh, issuance it probably takes one unit of time now <clears throat> so i think i think what's happened is i don't think it's a strategic change uh, we would have crumbled had we not taken the strategic bet on digitalization or digitization last year last to last year over the last 5 years uh, that's what's made us survive and in fact thrive in this environment but the but the but this whole pandemic has just expedited 
and catalyze the way we look at these initiatives. We are trying to do everything faster now uh, because we know the moment we take it live, the adoption will happen. We are seeing impact of releases right away, like I talked about the EMI piece, uh, and there are many such initiatives. Uh, right, so it's made us more and more excited, uh, more and more uh, uh, eager, and I think more and more resources are being put in right away. Uh, right, uh, I guess so then uh, I can. Uh, I... Please go on. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, so what what is the roadmap when you when you look at it? I mean, currently you've been using the InfoWeb chatbot, okay, which is backing up your one of the additional channels that you've added for customer communication, which is WhatsApp. I mean, what is what is your view about the scene? So look, what's happened is uh, that the way people work has started to become very, very different, right? People aren't sitting in their branches or in head office, uh, always having access to laptop, uh, right? So now you need to make information uh, not only available, you need to make it available in a friendly manner, real-time manner. And that's where the whole InfoBib relationship is coming in. Uh, earlier, most of us would be sitting in uh, head offices, uh, Right now, when, when we are either on the move or in middle of call, if I need to quickly check something, I don't really log into a complex system and you know go through three layers of security. I just want something right there on my fingertips. Uh, and since it's coming from my mobile, it is pre-secure. You don't need to do an OTP. So that's where it helps. You know, what are my latest sales? A particular customer called me. You know, what is the status of his policy? Let's say if the policy has not been issued yet, what is the status of the claims? Uh, the customer is missing uh, some document. Uh, can I can I send that document and get that document right away? So I think I think that's what's happening. The whole point of the whole InfoBip WhatsApp initiative for us is how do we enable people to get exactly the information they want with one message, uh, right? So I want the policy policy number, soft copy in your WhatsApp right away, right? So that's the whole thing that we're trying to drive, and I think and I think that's going to be a big big uh, foray going forward because now people more and more are going to be on the move. Uh, that whole area of investing into laptops, trying to work with laptops and all is just going to go away. Uh, sorry, gentlemen, I have to intervene here. I'm so sorry. Uh, we're just out of time. I really want to thank both of you for this wonderful session. It's been great listening to you and thank you for joining us. It was a great, uh, the first five sad chat of uh, the Thursdays with InfoWip, a special series brought to you by Exchange for Media in association with InfoWip. And we had Mr. Ashish Gupta, CTO of Max Bupa Health Insurance and Mr. Milan Kadam, Regional Business Head West, InfoWip in India, India Private Limited. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. Thanks for having and us. Thank you so much. Uh, with this, thank, we you, move on to the, thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, we move on to the next session, which is a panel discussion. Uh, I just want to mention that Thursdays with InfoBip is, is, is a special series where the focus is on the digital and the various facets of digital, especially technology and marketing. So the next panel discussion is uh, about the future of Indian financial sector in a hyper connected era and I want to introduce the esteemed panelists. We have Mr. Alok Ban, Director and CMO Max Life Insurance. Uh, uh, we have Mr. Lakshman uh, Vela Yutham, uh, CMO Ujwan Small Finance Bank. We have Mr. Ravi Santa Nam, CMO HDFC Bank. We have Sachin, uh, Mr. Sachin Vashishta, AD and Head Digital and uh, Marketing PesaBazaar.com, and taking this discussion forward, our session chair, Ms. Harsha Solanki, MD, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Nepal, InfoBib. Before I hand it over, I want to also announce that we'll be taking questions from all the viewers. Uh, you can post your questions and we'll make sure it gets answered. Thank you so much for joining us and over to you, Ms. Solanki. Thank you, Ruhel, um, for the lovely introduction. And uh, honestly, I'm personally looking forward to hearing some great insight from the esteemed panelists that we have today on the most uh, researched and talked about topic, uh, future of Indian financial sector in a hyper-connected era. So over the last few years, there have been innumerable innovative technological uh, innovations that are used by the industries to offer increasingly more world-class products and services. This is something worth pondering over. So how much time do you think the telephone uh, launched in 1878 took to reach 100 million users? Well, it took them about 75 years. 
mobile phones, 16 years. Facebook, two and a half years. Instagram, two years. Reliance Geo took 170 days to reach 100 million users. So in this hyper-connected world where disruption is the norm, the faster one can connect to more people, the better are the chances of winning the customers of tomorrow. Building a robust fintech ecosystem where startup firms engage in partnerships with financial institutions, research institutions, technology experts, and government agencies is expected to be a key enabler for growth and innovation in the financial services sector. The financial services has embarked upon its digital journey and is catching up fast with its global peers in terms of adoption and implementation. India has leapfrogged into the era of innovation in financial services by adopting the latest in technology. Today's digital age and hyper-connected environment requires financial institutions to reimagine their business continuously, and Indian BFSI sector is making great strides when it comes to true digital transformation. Today's discussion will focus on the exponential technologies disrupting the sector. So let's kickstart this discussion with our esteemed panelists. And my first question would be to you, Alok. We all know that in today's uh, hyper-connected world, financial institutions must learn the lessons on how to stay relevant in a market that is facing one of the significant disruptions so far. But when it comes to customer expectations, how has hyper-connectivity changed customer expectations in your view? Thank you very much for having me here, Harsha, and hi to all my co-panelists. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me well. Yes, very well. Good. Good. So, you know, uh, this is a very short question that has basically tons around it. Uh, at least in the last one year and this pandemic year, when you look at it from the customer's lens, uh, anything and everything that you could have imagined has changed. And for me to be able to give a suitable response, uh, I guess I may take an hour, so I will try and break into smaller uh, and I will really start from the basics as to why has why have we changed? I and mean, we are also customers, right? So why have we changed? And I think it's it's important to understand that what we call what we faced as the global pandemic actually began from a global pandemic, moved more closer to us in the form of a local pandemic, and then became a personal pandemic because this thing started to appear outside our houses. Our neighbors were facing it, and therefore customers and consumers at large and human beings at large have no other option but to start acting and not wait but to act on their own. And whatever they could understand and hear from all the communication that they were receiving, they took some actions. And frankly, we are all human beings. Is, the, is that species that has is the strongest species uh, back to Darwinian theories, back to our school days, survival of the fittest. So we had to change because we had to survive our existence was questioned. Human beings are social animals and being social became the biggest weapon. Touch was a weapon. Hugging was a weapon. We had to change ourselves. So consumers changed overnight and are continuously changing as we speak. So is the pandemic over? Hopefully we are seeing it, it on its way out, but have the consumers started to change they continue to change. And I'm hoping that in some time, we all as consumers will also come back to some of our known practices because everything changed. The biggest thing is touch became a problem. So touch free was, was I would say the biggest, uh, you know, need to manage the pandemic and each other. And hence the moment you say touch free becomes the word digital. So digital, and you heard the previous panelists also talk about it. Digital is not only now a boardroom conversation. I think it's a bedroom conversation. Uh, so from the boardroom to the bedroom, mm -hmm. it's a personal conversation now than just a very nice CEO to CEO talk. I mean, I, I can tell you uh, anecdotally, my father-in-law, Touchwood, who's 87, enjoys Paytm the most because he thinks he's fully empowered to pay all his bills. Mm -hmm. And he is enjoying the OTT platforms. He's through the day on, on Netflix. So everybody's quotient, the digital quotient of everybody has taken kind of, I guess I would imagine 400x times of uh, development and adoption. So that became a starting challenge. 
or any of our organizations i believe that the real heroes for I mean, from a corporate perspective other than obviously our frontline people are all the guys who are meeting customers the real heroes heroes have been the digital folks who have enabled all of us including organizations and their our consumers to be able to converse because one thing that did not change for humans is connections you may become socially distant you may become no touch and feel but connections have not disappeared we can't survive without connections so digital took over the platform of of connections now that's really why the consumer changed and the consumer continues to change the second step i'd like to really address over here is that how did organizations progressive organizations respond and i believe that we responded at first step to survive and now we are responding to try and kind of thrive i come from a life insurance industry and i'd like to state i the previous speaker also from insurance that uh, life insurance is a is a bloody push category right no one wants to talk about death and this is the traditional uh, industry where you have to have a person in front of you so in this era where suddenly we realize that you can't meet people they will throw you out they were always kind of pushing you away when you discuss life insurance not even worse how would we survive frankly if i were to play this game again i don't think i'll reach to where we've reached because we would have too many doubts in our mind we managed on a daily basis we didn't know frankly what's what's going to happen tomorrow and that's when even for organizations certain hunches played and we gave credence to our hunches we didn't do over analysis and paralysis like organizations do but we realized a few things organizations like us realized that we had to turn our entire ecosystem into a trustless ecosystem therefore within 30 days all our all our, within 15 days actually all our employees were working from home so digitization we started to engage with all our customers digitally and you know <coughs> my sellers largely my proprietary sellers are not bank staff well a lot of our sales does gets done by bank staff but they are the young guys right 27 30 32 my agents are upwards of 40 45 years old so but the realization was that they adapted so fast that they became they became digizens almost and they were questioning us who we thought were very very smart digitally but our entire adoption of that using all technologies bi ai b it ai b it websites everything else tons of uh, initiatives happened in 30 days flat you ask me to play it again i will i will take maybe 300 days to do that in my planning itself i'll take 30 days to plan itself so i think that they were the real heroes for us to bring our businesses back of course life insurance is a business that sadly so thrives when the outcomes are little little bit dire so yeah businesses have grown but there's ravi over here he can tell you an amount of banks uh, how, how they went through uh, you know changes uh, so that was also an important part uh, from a from an organization perspective i think uh, digital and data data has become the most important aspect for all of us and that's actually enabled by digital because it's the digital ecosystem that allows all of us to understand the data so data i i believe at least data is the new oil i mean it's the big data you can talk at all these nice terms are real but we are now able to understand every second of a customer because he's leaving all these indications through all his cookies and everything else and he's moved into digital platforms almost now for what Three times over what he was doing prior, four or five hours in a day, he's on the social platforms. So for us, for anybody for that matter, who is who is focused on customer, data has to be core to him. At the same time, I think customers were increasingly feeling anxious, as we studied when the when the uh, uh, pandemic broke out, the level of anxiety went through the roof. We were getting numerous number of calls. from our customers on our call centers on our websites and only asking one question is my policy covering covid and how much ever you went back to them proactively or reactively the question would repeat itself for almost 3 to 4 months till our regulator came in to the game and said yes all policies approved by by uh, irdi that's our regulator covers for covid so that kind of put things down but there are two things that you must uh, you must pick out a bit differentially over here unlike music and other things and ravi will add to this we are a highly regulated industry 
right money is serious business so whatever changes we have to adapt to and adapt to have to a be number one on infotech which takes time and it's the biggest challenge that we face but also the regulator has to allow a certain freedom and i must say that the regulators across the country have been quite proactive they could be always better but that's always the dil mange more attitude but yeah it takes us time for the regulator to really give us the give us the freedom to adapt and adopt and it's money business here we can't do fly by night kind of operations everybody wants uberization of everything so to uberize financial services it is it is a different kettle of fish than movie tickets and book my show and the rest so yeah on the customer side of anxiety grew up his impatience grew he wanted everything like you know back of a back of a zip lock quickly enough and we also realized through various consumer insights that the customer is now more here and now focused because he wants to ensure that he is first safe and then he will plan for other milestones so for me as an industry where life insurance is milestone based uh, product we were fearing that the consumers will delay the purchase decision and will go for more here and now but i think the consumers were uh, the customers were a bit more anxious than what we thought and our insurance demand started to grow up you know uh, we did a survey just now with the uh, with the uh, with kantar imrb and we realized that while death has always been a taboo conversation in india vis a vis the west but there is some conversation that is happening in the families which is around death now that is a very important tipping point from a life insurance perspective so how do we enable that conversation to result in a purchase decision is the journey we have to traverse and that journey can only be traversed successfully if your if your engagement is digital and is quick the longer you leave the customer to take a decision the more the decision will be postponed so digital becomes a very important aspect there's one last point i want to talk about the customer over here then i'll hand it over i guess i've taken too long uh while the customers anxieties went up extremely they were looking for a partner to help them go through this journey so brands that kind of kept quiet are not the brands they're looking for they're looking for brands who are constantly holding their hand and making them walk this tough path so at least from our point of view we ran out initiatives which said we have a theme called close to customer get closer to the customer get to where he is instead of getting him to where you are in any case branches were closed right for a fair part of the time so we had to get to where the customer was and that was a digital that was on social platforms our website had to be completely reoriented to become make it more customer focused a uh, lot of dependence on di on diy kind of transactions so we turned around our website our website traffic increased almost by three times uh and i'll just let, let, let you leave you with this that customers started to value trust much more the brand that exudes trust would be something that they will reach out to but trust also means you got to be authentic you can't be in a sales organization format you know you can't be in this typical salesu variety but you have to be more uh, you know compassionate towards him and i i read somewhere and i'll quote from there that's not my quote but i'll quote from there uh, it touched me uh, from a customer perspective from an organization point of view heart is the new brain so a lot of us uh, are bankers and uh, and insurance guys are mathematically left brain guys the brand that is more right brain is the brand i i believe at least we believe that is something that will sustain itself so for the brand guys you have to be more compassionate you have to be more authentic you have to be more real you have to be more more understanding and like the previous spokesperson said life insurance or insurance is a bloody complex product uh it is depended on human interface so hopefully uh, all of us in the industry are cracking those the basic issues with life with insurance getting into conversations that are more stories and the consumers are looking for us to walk with them and not leave them alone and wait for them to come back because when they come back they're not going to come back to a brand that's kept quiet 
So that's been the theme that we've operated in, and uh, we are hoping that uh, as time goes by, we will grow. We are growing right now at an at an organizational level, but yeah, could be better. Thanks. Thank Uber. you. Aldo. Thank you. Very well said. You know, carrying these sentiments forward, I'd like to put forth my next question to you, Ravi. While hyperconnectivity brings a massive opportunity for marketers to communicate across all areas of the martech and stack. It also brings with it uh, challenges in communication and connecting effectively across a fragmented customer experience. So do you agree? And what according to you is the key to architect a relevant uh, connected consumer experience? I think the question is extremely complicated. There are lots of uh, words which have been put together to get you a feel that uh, it is a tough space to be in. It's not as tough as uh, it is uh, made out to be. So if I look at the bank, for example, 90% of the transactions were digital before the pandemic. So people are not walking into the branch. So as Alok was explaining, the biggest change for us is the ability of our salespeople to accept digital. But at the end of the day, you have to understand maturity levels of different organizations, different places differ. And I can understand the, the insurance experience is what we used to look up to in terms of their fulfillment. But sale is still very tough. But for the banks, transactions were anyway happening on the digital platform. So how do you bring the sale? The biggest challenge for us was to get the salespeople accept digital, which has happened because of the pandemic. So in this hyper-connected world, what connectivity has improved because of the pandemic? Nothing. What was there in January 2020 and what is there in January 2021 is exactly the same. Okay, So nothing has changed. What has changed is people are willing to experiment a lot more. And uh, Alok was talking about a touchless world. I want people to touch their phones. Rather than go to any other place, pick up the phone and talk to somebody for the sale, which used to happen in the banking space, I'm saying, don't go there, touch your phone. So for me, it is going to touch. It's not touchless. When it comes to swiping the card, I went and said them, don't do anything, tap and pay and go. So it depends on the category that you're looking at. And the problem for any kind of a hyper-connected world and the hyper-connected experience is all about the ability to put the data together. And now there are customers who are coming and looking at our website because it became the first port of call in terms of what needs to be done, what is the products that you have, what is the solution that you have to offer. And the challenges, for example, is most of the websites of most of the organizations are more sales focused than service focused. So what the pandemic taught us is when suddenly the call center, which is your biggest service center in terms of ability to get a call done and satisfy and Indians like calling call centers that we should accept. They're not used to self-service mode on do it yourself service on a chat or on a kind of a bot or on the way finding their own information on the net. So what we need to do is to change our own attitude towards what needs to be put on the website and how much more we can do in terms of creating those self-service capabilities on our bots. So today, for example, we have got more than 35 transactions of both banking as well as in the card enabled in the last six months. Because we found that people are finding it difficult to reach the call centers and we had people problem in terms of having people come into the call centers. So all these things are the ones which we change. Now, the hyper connectivity and the experiences, people are looking at the website and now they're having a problem. Are you going to go and send a message saying that buy my life insurance policy that I am the agent of say Max or an ICAC approve or a HDFC life and say that at that point of time, that's not the best thing to do. The best thing is to do is to figure out the customer is actually looking at a service experience issue. And are we going to go ahead and talk about it with the customer rather than talking about a product sale that is going to happen? So for me, it's all about putting the data together and then starting off with that as a base, what is the next best action to be done? Uh, that's very insightful. And it's, it's truly about, uh, you, know, you very rightly mentioned, it's truly about both businesses and consumers being digitally savvy in a digital or a hyper-connected era. So moving on, um, digital banking is it a, isn't a new, um, you know, isn't new. But with COVID pandemic, uh, Indians suddenly flocked to online and mobile banking. So my next question is to you, Sachin. The online lending platforms have witnessed a big spike over the past 11 months. 
and with physical banking resuming, is this uptick, up uptick uh, in traffic uh, here to stay? Yeah, uh, uh, thanks, thanks, Asha. Actually, you know, uh, like uh, Alok sir and Ravi sir, they rightly said that uh, the pandemic actually forced us uh, uh, both from uh, you know a consumer's point of view as well as from the provider's point of view to you know think digital as the mainstream channel. Being a digital first organization, we have been advocating that uh, since our inception. That digital is the way forward, right? Uh, we and, and uh, we are in both uh, insurance as well as banking. So we, I, I somewhat know, uh, uh, you know, the the entire process and the challenges which provider as well as consumer are facing. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, you know, before pandemic, uh, if if it comes to insurance, or large ticket insurance had a medical uh, cycle of it, right? And it suddenly came uh, to a halt, especially in the month of April and May. And the way all these insurance companies, especially Max, ICIC, and all the leading, uh, you know, leading companies, how they, you know, figured out a alternate way to that, how they, you know, the the, the way they uh, created an alternate go-to market, uh, you know, way to tackle that, that was really uh, brilliant. Similarly, from the banking part of it, like Ravisa said, that transactions were happening online, but the sales piece was off offline and largely because both these industries are heavily regulated so you needed uh, you know a kyc to be done in person there has there, there was uh, an executive of a bank going to the customer getting all the signatures doing the kyc collecting all the documents and then the final dispersal was happening right the pandemic forced us to think alternate to that this this entire process and that's why most of these banks they've started as well as us we started working on our digital stack. How can we bring and map this particular process online, right? And and in a way, it has changed both these, especially you know, insurance and and banking industry uh, uh, altogether. And not changed completely, but at least you know, uh, forced us to think in that direction. As far as your question is concerned, whether consumer uh, will you know uh, be back on the offline uh, lending or offline part of it, or will they keep coming on to the digital lending platforms? Right, digital is all about convenience and speed. Right, uh, when it comes to you know getting a service, people want it as soon as possible. People want uh, you know uh, it to. People want to get them in a very convenient way. They don't want to you know get into complex processes. They don't want to get into you know uh, the hassles of it. They just want the service or the product to reach them. Right, and digital is the best way to that. And consumers have experienced that. Providers have started working or, or uh, you know, creating uh, an environment or I will say a platform uh, to, you know, cater to these kind of, uh, uh, you know, requests. So I believe that uh, whether offline, uh, you know, starts or, or whether it'll take a somewhat more time before the thing, before things settle, digital will keep on growing, be it lending, insurance or any other category. But I see Ravi. Uh, uh, is no, I, I just uh, want to add add on to what Sachin said. See, there is this threshold of irreversibility concept. Once a certain way of doing things and a certain percentage of population start doing it that way, then there is no going back. It's like, for example, in your anger days, maybe maybe not your anger days, maybe in my anger days, I remember going to a train station to book a long distance return ticket. Now, if I go and tell my daughter, that I used to go to a train station to book a long distance train ticket. She says, why are you not doing on your mobile, right? Because that's what they have seen. So if all of us have moved to IRCTC, all of us have moved to ticketing in the way in the mobile, it's extremely difficult to go back and find an agent to book your air ticket. Okay, there is a threshold of irreversibility which gets crossed. In my view, for many of the industries, the threshold of irreversibility has been crossed in certain areas during this pandemic. Once it has been crossed, it is impossible for people to go back. Like, for example, as a credit card uh, issuer, we understand how many people are buying groceries. So you all understand the economy very easily. Travel is down, dining is down, entertainment is down. And that is one of the three of the biggest categories of spend of consumers like Lakshman and Alok and all those people, right? Now, in spite of all those being down, and we also have a business card portfolio, which is primarily given to people like them when they are transactions and volumes on card in December is higher than January. Why? Because people, all of us who have never bought in Big Bazaar a grocery has gone ahead and bought because 
after the pandemic now that you are used to the convenience of it coming home and in certain towns and places like bombay where traffic is a pain parking is a pain i don't think people are going to go back to the neighborhood grocer and buy it they will still go for their bread and eggs and all those stuff so this is the consumer behavior that we see so there is no way that people are not going to come back to digital and if you see another angle of what sachin looks at it is primarily the small ticket loans which have increased people are not going to go into a digital platform to take a 50 lakhs home loan that's not going to happen what is going to happen and what is happening today is the 5000 rupee loan and the 10000 rupee loan where multiple people are going to do and those things will happen only digitally otherwise there is no economic sense also of doing that because you can't have a collection cost you can't have a origination cost so if you look at it this pandemic has changed behaviors and threshold of irreversibility has been crossed in many areas such in as a great future that much i can tell you no uh, very very well said i think we should we we, we are looking forward to uh, see what's going to stay as a new normal now i think this is what we 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 are we've been talking about right so uh, taking this discussion a step forward um, so we are now entering an era where customer engagement takes place in real time over apps of customer's choice where the mobile interface goes beyond customer expectations and where an api platform offers new opportunities laying the foundation of an invisible institution so thanks to the technology uh, financial sector is one of the biggest users of artificial intelligence machine learning and predictive technology so lakshman uh, we would like to hear your views on how are you using these tools to make the customer experience more personalized and in a non intrusive way or manner uh, thank you arsha and a warm welcome to all the participants and the co panelists so before i answer this question let me give you a background of uh, jivan small finance bank uh, so we have close to on 5 million customers and uh, most of them work at the branches Uh, because we primarily serve the unserved and the underserved customers, uh, which is the aspiring middle class, uh, which is you know adapting into different types of digital banking. So for them, the entire aspect of digital banking is quite new. Um, which, having said that, yes, the pandemic brought one quality out uh, among the employees as well as the customers is the resilience, the resilience to adapt to the situation, the environment around them. their ability to uh, experiment you know and be open to the fact that yes there is an alternate way to do banking uh, more importantly you uh, know when when the pandemic broke out you know we did janta connect which means that we called out each and every customer and explained to them what covid was all about see in a mass affluent or an hni segment it is assumed that you will know because you have information in us but that was not the case with us we had to reach out and explain to them what covid 19 was what was emi moratorium all about how can you avail them so the fact that even today for us you know, the assisted service aspect is very big so um, so i would like to just you know take a peek back to 1800s where the foundation for artificial intelligence and machine language was laid out by von neumann allen turing out there and you know if one way to go back and tell you know, if one way to make a movie you know how 2021 would look in 1800 it might probably sound quite silly and say no does such a possibility even exist okay the fact is that now if you were to leap frog ourselves 200 years ahead and 100% sure that api would be the order of the day like the way we do our mobile banking yes today for example you no know, there are a lot of new banks and for example ujivan small finance bank you no know, we are building our strong api banking system because automated platforms especially in areas of marketing we are building it but more importantly we need to bear in mind the fact that our consumers are more familiar with the voice video and vernacular so whatever we converse you know we converse in the vernacular language okay also i mean it's not it's not a literal google translation let's say no so you have to be uh, very very sensitive to ethnic aspects the the way the words are you know spoken to the way so for us the core aspect of uh, uh, having a relationship with the customer it is based on empathy and respect so the fact that we always say place the when we say customer centricity for us you no know, the first thing that we responded to when the covid happened was are our customers safe can we ensure their safety can we ensure their well being so even today when we are designing technology not just the customer front end but the entire back end per se the idea is that how do you make back how do you demystify the entire concept of banking you know for them just to enter the bank with you know, so much paperwork and all is something that they are not used to and their banking experience is predominantly limited 
so how do you still give them the state of the art banking but while being while making it so very convenient and easy so so for example you know, we, we have the api platform that we are building today enables us to connect with all the you know the fintech firms so that you know, we we are able to connect with them and offer services on the go so the idea is that in every interface that you are building in today of course we are at baby steps as i said you know, we are we have we need to slow, start moving from assisted to self service and that's quite a distance away but the point is even during the assisted mode of service can i make the conversation just not relating to the fact that no you need to adopt to mobile banking but the fact that why it is safe and trustworthy and how can you utilize the same amount of time was doing something better in fact the very core concept is you no know, how do you enable financial freedom for the masses because when they progress is that when the nation and the community at large progresses in fact uh, the the biggest lesson that, that we learned during the demonetization is the fact that you know, we started financial literacy programs in a very big way a uh, fact that we also had the richer experience of being in nbfc mfi so you no know, we have trained over 1 lakh you know, to 1 lakh financial literacy programs we have reached out to over 1 lakh customers we also um, have tied up uh, through our chote kadam initiatives wherein we identify projects which are um, uh it could be you know uh, with uh, with our customers so we do a co creation of projects with our customers uh, in terms of you uh, know identifying you know whether you need to build a school or a bus stop so the idea is that we work very closely with our customers to understand you know how so let's say if i have to, even if i have to evolve my mobile platform okay or my internet banking or build my api stack how is the customer thinking because it is evolving you know with every region and every state it is it is differing so how do you integrate the whole aspect of it so for example we have tied up with airtel banking outlets now that and that those are beyond the 10 km radius of our branch the idea is to get the customer to walk into that store okay and experience the first hand aspect of how you, know, you can bank digitally but at the same time there is someone at the store to assist you so and we have manimitra outlets equally which are ujjivan led outlets to promote the whole thing so whether it be a fund transfer or a cash deposit or a cash withdrawal so we are realizing is that one we need to speak their language to at any point in time we still need to have some form of assisted service and three as we slowly progress them into various modes of banking you know we need to ensure that the entire aspect is convenient and more importantly that we need to assure them that it is safe and sound and no trustworthy so for us the journey is more about building trust into that relationship you no know, building trust by being empathetic to the needs of the customer and respecting them for what they are and the fact that despite the challenges they are willing to embrace in whatever way they can and we believe that you no know, that's how we are building this agile technology and we believe that and we are confident that you no know, going forward you no know, uh, in terms of providing the entire artificial you no know, or leveraging the artificial intelligence and machine language we would be able to understand our customer needs better you know combine the uh, the analytics platform as well as the various social media listening platforms and you no know, further build on to not only the products and services but a better and a simpler way to communicate with the customers absolutely um you know um moving forward um, so there is no doubt that we are witnessing an increasing so, demand sorry sorry just wanted to add to one point just a bit of a on the funnier yeah. side i was thinking sure. like i was talking about in 1800s we wouldn't have imagined 2021 uh, at least i i imagined it uh, thanks to star trek in my time they would say if you remember captain kirk and uh, you guys won't remember i guess i'm hoping that ravi will uh, bear with me on this one just taken by the color of the hair that uh, ravi <laughs> nothing more than that don't take it otherwise uh, you know when they used to say energize and you would see that these guys appeared somewhere else this is what we are in zoom right now we are all sitting in different places but talking to each other so look at sky fi movies you will realize 1863 john orwell is a very good example of what next in please 1863 is not is not my time but <laughs> i agree, i agree no look for no, no, i'm talking about sky fi movies the book. i'm talking about the book yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so uh, yeah, you know just looking at the time that we have just one final question so just uh, so there is no doubt that we are witnessing an increasing demand for digital banking experience from millennials and the gen zers is transmuting how the entire uh, industry operates so consumers growing desire to access let's say financial services from digital channels 
has led to a gush in new banking technologies that are uh, reconceptualizing the banking industry. So India is leading the next mega shifts boosted by digital transformation. A very significant uh, uh, reality of today's hyperconnected world is the understanding that what got us here will not get us to where we aim to go next. Technology will drive a deep fundamental mega shift in this sector. Our world will change more in the next 20 years than it has in the past 200 years. So, uh, you know, uh, just a final concluding question to all the panelists here. Uh, with a strong digital foundation and omni channel strategy, how can financial organizations pivot uh, further down the road? And what is your advice to the financial services and banking institutions to become future ready? Maybe a quick view from each panelist. Uh, as we don't have much time, maybe 30 seconds from each one of you. So we can start with uh, Ravi, hearing your views. I will not tell my secret. Hmm. It's all to everybody. So jokes apart, I, I think uh, the road is pretty clear. Consumers uh, have adopted digital. There's no question of saying or adopting digital. It's a question of more use cases to be enabled for them. And uh, we should always be clear about uh, what's happening. And uh, we should have the ability to look at the corner of our eyes and see who is going to disturb us next. So it, it's better to be self-destructive and create something new rather than allowing somebody else to come and do it. It's a regulated industry. So obviously there will be some challenges for a new player to come in, but people are playing on the basis of their ability to hit. So you should be in a position to anticipate what your consumer likes better than somebody else. Right, right. Lakshman, what would be your advice? In my view, I think the way the smartphone industry has evolved, no, today we have Android as well as iOS. I think standardized banking platforms, standardized blockchain platforms will evolve over a period of time. And I think it is a play of you know, who joins hands, you know, whether new banks join hands with the large banks, small banks across the board to, to, to create that disruption across. I, th I think uh, you know, we will see that happening in the next 10 years. Sachin, okay. let's hear from you. Yeah. So, like, uh, so while uh, you know people have started adopt adopting digital, uh, digital, uh, you know, people have started saying that digital is the way forward. But there is a huge scope still. Uh, so, while in marketing we have started adopting uh, various technologies for last a uh, uh, few years now, uh, especially in last one and a half years when all these omni-channel AI, ML, chatbots, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they came in. But, uh, uh, you know, as far as banking or BFSI is concerned, there's a huge scope of these technologies, especially in the customer service segment, which is uh, even today, it's, it's a highly human dependent uh, process. You know, we have huge call centers, uh, you know, uh, where people usually call and they are like Ravi said, they uh, and like Alok said that people would want to speak to humans, you know, to, uh, to, for clarification, to get their services address, to get their, you know, uh, things addressed so there is a huge scope uh, in in this service domain apart from that uh, you know bfsi is blamed to be a very serious and monotonous uh, brand uh, uh, industry right so and and like you rightly said that more and more millennials and youngsters are uh, you know trying to get the first financial product be it insurance or uh, you know credit card or something else we uh, have to start speaking their language Right, we have to be slightly more vibrant, you know, slightly more uh, like Aloksa said that heart is the new brain. So we'll have to start uh, thinking from the heart rather than you know applying brain everywhere. Absolutely. And Alok, what would be your suggestions? I think a I really enjoyed a lot of interesting conversations. Uh, uh, I would say three things, uh, uh, you know, Harsha. Uh, I would hold my stake and say that. Uh, yeah, maybe physical. I think I don't think we're still in the route of replacing a human being, at least in my category. Uh, but as an as a progressive organization, we have to adopt digital. And I I don't like to use the word digital. I have, I prefer to use the word digify. So more digital, but the physical influence. I mean, I uh, like Ravi said, touch the mobile. We believe in the fact of the confluence between the seventy kilo human being and the seventy gram mobile. That is really where the future lies. And uh, I will still insist that uh, as marketeers, we have to drive the, uh, drive the narratives uh, for the organization at large. Somebody has to carry the consumer flag. Uh, 
uh, and I think it leads from the marketeers because that's the final, uh, you know, answer to all our problems. So therefore, I insist the heart will still have to remain the new brain. The right brain will win, not the left brain. Data critical, but not complete. That's it. Thank you, Alo. So you know, while hearing the views of all the panelists today, I picked up some keywords that were very meaningful and very impactful in relation to the topic of discussion today. So I'm going to say consumer continues to change customer centricity, right? Authenticity, compassionate, empathy, respect, trust, secure, convenience, speed, resilience, handholding, very important, data, digital adoption and engagement and heart is the new frame. So putting all this together, we can broadly conclude that today's customer expect relevant content in relation to what they are doing anytime, anywhere in the format on the device of their choosing. It's their journey that dictates your strategy. And in order to keep up with the new kind of always connected customer, <coughs> not the financial sector, but all businesses must embrace the technology to deliver an unmatched customer experience. And going forward, as the world becomes more connected, uh, deeper amalgamation and alliance is the key to successful and secured hyper-connected uh, world in the BFSI sector. And there should be a vigorous linkage between offering process and value addition in the technological sector. On the other hand, as financial establishments look inward to stiffen their technology integrations, the consumers will notice a sequence of changes that will provide them with a unified experience. On that note, let me wind up by thanking all of you for your time and valuable insights. It was indeed a very enlightening and illuminating session. Thank you all once again. Thank you everyone once again. And uh, I just uh, joining us on this Thursdays with Infobip, a special series brought to you by Exchange for Media in association with Infobip. And what a lovely session it was. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, uh, the Exchange for Media team at the back end and the Infobip team for making this possible. Uh, see you soon and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone.